<laughs> thank you. Okay, so um, we want to thank family and friends from around the world for listening today. And you know who you are. You know who you are in England, France, Italy, Portugal, Belgium, Australia, Ukraine, and Korea. I love our diversity. I'm Cynthia Jarvis, your host today from the U Equals Me Foundation. And this foundation exists to influence public opinion on issues of equality, uh, civil rights, or social action. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing Tracy and Steve Webster, the authors of the book, The Law of Creation. And a new book you have out, just out, is learning called Learning to Fly. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. So I did see on your website that Learning to Fly was um, currently downloadable as a gift. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Fabulous. And it feels like it's a sequel to the law of, uh, of creation. Correct. Um, so when we, um, Stephen wrote the law of creation, he did, he did the manuscript. Um, uh, what are we now? 2022. He must've done it about eight years ago. Um, and he never published it until, um, the beginning of 2020, he brought it out and he get, gave it to me to look at the timing was perfect. Mm -hmm. It saved my life. <laughs> yeah. And um, yes. <laughs> and we then self-published it and I put my stamp of approval on it. I changed stuff up. I put in a, my voice and Steve said that I should um, put my name on the title. And I said to him, I can't do that. I didn't really write the book. He said, no, but you really have to because it's you. <laughs> and so I thought about it and I thought, how can I remain in integrity um, um, and have my name on there um, without having felt like I should have my name on there? So I thought, gave it some thought and I could recognize the benefit, um, not to myself, but to me being able to do what it is that was starting to um, uh, materialize. I wanted to get a message out there and help people. I'd, I'd, I'd seen how my life could turn around 180 degrees um, and... Uh, I wanted to facilitate that for other people and having my name there meant that I could. Um, so I thought to myself, all right, if I take everything we say in the law of creation and I put it into practice and I develop a stepping stone, a pathway to um, enlightenment or, or, or awakening, um, then I will feel I have got, um, um, uh, my, I'm authentically have my name on the title. So uh, that's what I did. And we're learning, to, we're, we're learning to fly was part of that process. Mm -hmm. But right now we're busy writing a book together, another one. <laughs> and um, that is going to have literally everything because it's been a process now of three years. And finally, we're at a point where we have complete understanding, absolute understanding of everything that we say in the book. We term it knowing. Um, mm -hmm. There's a point of communi communi co uh, uh, collecting knowledge. At some point, you've got to get to knowledge from knowledge to knowing, because that's the whole point of accumulating knowledge to know. <laughs> that and That's right. Yes. And that's where we're at now. And the information that comes to us is just absolutely mind blowing. Mm -hmm. You know, I can I can see that through the work of the book. It's there's a there's a lot in this this book, The Law of Creation. And it's years and years and years of 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 studying and knowing. I can see that and feel that in the book. It's really fantastic. I loved it. Thank um you. In the in in the book, the law of creation, you go into detail on using your consciousness and subconsciousness to create wealth and manifesting, you know, your heart's desires, happiness, joy. Um, but also, you go into why the secret works and why it doesn't work, why the law of attraction works, why it's not working for people. I thought that that was really fascinating. Is if it's all right with you, can we start start there? Absolutely. How, <laughs> how your thoughts how your thoughts um are your creations you are you are what you think Yes, absolutely. Um, I'll um, say a little bit and then I'll hand over to Steve because he approaches it from a different perspective and he has more of the scientific brain, um, which speaks to uh, often generally men. And I'm all about the story and my feelings. And <laughs> yeah. So, so for me, I just want to chip in there and say that the feeling is far more important than knowing stuff. So it's what you feel. That's how you create a manifest. That's how you create. And that's where poor left brain men like me are in a little bit of trouble when they try to do law of creation because they're trying to do everything from a conscious left brain perspective, whereas it only really works with the subconscious right brain perspective. 
And a person that is so in tune with their emotions is way easier, uh, has far more power in terms of manifesting and creating what they want. So it's how you feel. It's not really, it's, it's how you feel behind the thought. So the 18th law is the law of vibration. Um, and that for me should be law number one, really. <laughs> or the law, because ultimately that's the language of the universe. So if you want to speak to the universe, um, you have to speak in the language of the universe. So um, in the Bible, it says, um, uh, seek, uh, ask and you shall receive, but it doesn't tell you in the Bible what you should ask for or how you should ask for it. Mm -hmm. So that's open to interpretation. And that's um, um, uh, ultimately what uh, um, free will comes down to. So um, if we're going to speak in the language of the universe in, in, in vibration, we speak the language of the universe, it's frequency, the language of frequency, and we speak it through our emotions. Mm -hmm. We don't speak it in our, our, our heads and we don't speak it with words. It is a, it is a feeling. <laughs> and, and that feeling in, interprets into the brain as a thought. Um, and, um, when we when we pray prayer works mm -hmm. but not if you're saying hey god please can i have this that and the next thing <laughs> please bring me a mercedes <laughs> yes because <laughs> ultimately why do you want the mercedes the mercedes isn't why you want it it's not for the car yes there's an element of that but it's not technically what it is you've got to dive down deeper and why do i want this beautiful sparkly blue mercedes with this leather trim and whatever because when you've got it, what do you think it's going to give you? It's going to make you some form of happy. So what form of happy? Is it going to make you feel like you're successful? Is it going to make you uh, feel like you can get a, a spouse? <laughs> um, uh, is it going to make you feel hot and desirable? What is it going to give you? That's what you've got to get down to. And then that's what you've got to ask for. Mm -hmm. And then how you ask for it is by already feeling like you have it. And that's the hardest thing, because how can you have something you don't have? <laughs> you yeah. don't have, it, which is the reason you want it. So it's like a catch 22 situation. But what, how will you feel when you have it? So you've got to understand what it brings you in the first place, why you want it. So therefore, you can get into the feeling of, of, of having it. And then you can have that feeling in the present moment. And that's how you put out a, a um, vibration, a frequency to the yeah. universe. It, it's a match, a it's frequency dead. match. It's a magnet match. You track back what you're giving out mm -hmm. and so you've got to be giving out what it is that you want so yeah. how do you do that yeah. yeah so how do you do that <laughs> okay so it's it's not a easy thing um as i found out over the last three years um you have to understand um uh, is that uh, our cats are <laughs> play they're giving us a hard time they're, make they're joining in they're joining they in. in that's great <laughs> So um, what you've got to do is you've got to understand your feelings. If you can just switch on the feeling that uh, you feel like you have everything that you're asking for, great. But most of us can't. It's it's a process to do it. And, and what those feelings entail are uh, what you believe. So you've got to get down to what do you believe. And most of us don't question that. If you think about your body, your body updates itself. So uh, daily, uh, weekly, monthly, everything, every, every day, um, uh, your cells are dying and resurrecting themselves. So the, the cell dies, it resurrects itself, um, and it will resurrect itself with your blueprint. And your blueprint is your beliefs. It is um, um, uh, uh, what you think about everything. So you got to get down to what you believe. So what do you believe about money? So if you're wanting to manifest a car, what do you believe about money? I believe that money doesn't grow on trees. I believe that money is hard to get. I believe that whatever, you got to start looking at those and start looking and seeing if they still benefit you. Because when our bodies do an update, uh, after seven years, every single cell in our body between seven and 10 years is no longer the same cell. Mm -hmm. um, it's completely regenerated and uh, completely resurrected in a different uh, and, and what was then no longer exists. But we never do that with our minds. Mm -hmm. Every time we believe something, we believe it because it's going to help us in the present moment. So we go through a divorce. We find our husband cheated on us. Oh, all men cheat is, becomes a belief. And right. love hurts becomes our belief. Seven years later, when you're now healed and you're looking for a new relationship, you've got to go check and see if you've updated those beliefs. Exactly. Do that love still hurt. And do all men still cheat? Because if you really believe that subconsciously, oh, you're not really going to get somebody that's going to come in and make you have a wonderful relationship. You're going to find somebody that's going to hurt you. And mm -hmm. probably cheat. <laughs> so I, I understand what you're putting out, and those beliefs are what you're putting out. 
I loved that in your book when you talk about deservability, you know, and worthiness, because that's a big that's a big part of of uh, the manifestation end of it. I thought that was really fascinating. Um, and Can what? I, yeah. Give me some on that quickly. Oh, please, please. So um, there's a thing called homeostasis. So I was fortunate enough to uh, be a hypnotherapist for four years. And it provided a fascinating insight into the human mind and how the human mind works. And we all have uh, a thing called homeostasis, which is the natural balance of what we believe we're worth. How is it that some people are billionaires and other people are living on the street? Mm -hmm. Because the billionaire believed he was worth that billion. And the, the homeless person just believed that bad luck and hard times was what he was deserved and what he was going to get. So, you can uh, if you look at somebody that won the lotto let's say they're really poor people and then several years later they've now that they've won the lotto now two years later three years later they've got no money left mm -hmm. they've spent it all why because their natural homeostasis was to go to the belief level the the worthiness level of who they thought they were or so, so, otherwise the script the yes. script absolutely yeah. we all have a script and we're only as good as the script. Whether you believe you can or you can't, you're absolutely right. Uh, so so yeah. the book was, first of all, describing, well, what is the law of attraction stroke creation? Right. Why did the secret work? Why didn't it work? But then also to say, okay, well, now we know these things. How can I improve myself? How can I make it work for me? And obviously, that's what we try to do. We've, we've given a lot of info there where you can actually change your homeostasis. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of info packed in this book. I I um, had to go back and reread. I wanted to reread and make sure I understand. I love the science behind it. I love that, Tracy, I love that we're not just talking woo-woo. <laughs> I, I love it because it's really difficult to have a conversation uh, about these matters with many people you know, that have this level of understanding without, you know, feeling um, judged or that the conversation is too threatening to somebody because they don't believe it. Um, and I, I, in your book, you said that, you know, a, a lot of people require proof of the work, um, which we've all run into, you know, prove it to me, prove it to me. Well, now they're, the scientists are proving it. Um, they're proving the quantum physics um, in the law of visualization or the, the, um, the photons, the double slit experience. That was really fascinating. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's, it is brilliant. We, we would all have been considered absolute lunatics 100 years ago, but because of quantum physics and the discoveries they're making, now all of a sudden, these things that we're saying are not as woo-woo, to use the word, as they were before. Mm -hmm. There is substance. Uh, scientists are now saying that everything that seems real isn't, and everything that isn't seems real. It's just absolutely turn around. We've yeah. no idea who we are, what we are. Uh, if you take uh, concepts like um, the space between matter for instance everything you're seeing is 99.99999 percent space so much so that if you were to compress the whole earth uh without any spaces whatsoever you would have something the size of a tennis ball that is absolutely mind-boggling yeah it's unimaginable but in your in your um in the quantum immortality in that chapter you say all, all um possibilities exist but you and then you also say all outcomes exist as well. Everything exists. Everything exists at the same time. Yes, at the same time. So I can explain that. Okay. So um, if all possibilities are possible, how can that be? So if it all comes back to understanding energy, we are energy and everything is energy. So how does energy work? Energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. Right. It can only change form. So then the mind starts working and I think, okay, so how can it not even be created? How can we have something that didn't create that always exists? Because it's infinite. It, it just always existed uh, and it always will. Um, and so you've got to start um, uh, taking your mind higher and you've got it. It's so I, I used to, I started doing it through um, scientific approaches where I do a what is it called when you have a um, 
uh, a deja yeah. vu or well, no, I scientifically tried to do it. I did it through a scientific oh, process hypothesis. Yeah, where I did an hypothesis. Oh. So I had to suspend belief <laughs> that, okay, everything is energy and it's all an illusion. So I had to um, believe those things and say, okay, if this is true, then let's have a look at this, that, and the next thing. So I had to work from the end. So I had to it, seek and you shall find. Mm -hmm. What are you seeking to understand? That's how we need to be looking at the universe. Mm -hmm. Not what we normally do. A, a, a person prefers to believe, uh, 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 how does the saying go by Francis Bacon? Uh, uh, a person believes to be uh, chooses to believe chooses to believe to be true what he wants to be true yeah, yeah. so what he prefers to be true Badly so whatever we look for we look for validation that what we believe about it is true but mm -hmm. then you don't learn anything so if right. you want to understand stand something you don't know you've got to start looking to understand it so you've got to suspend what you know and suspend what you believe in order to understand this and you've got to approach it with the with the perspective of let's understand how it could be true Mm -hmm. And that's how I came about. Um, what question am I answering? That everything is energy and um... possibility and outcomes, and everything right. is so... everything is energy. And and then you state in your book that um, the scientist Wheeler was it John Wheeler yes. uh, uh, concluded that the universe doesn't exist out there. Right. It exists in here. It's in your yeah. creation of it. Correct. Right. It's your per perspective of it. Your perspective. Everything, yes. Everything looks to you the way you believe it looks to you. So everything happens the way you believe it happens. And everybody's walking around like that. So everybody's world, you exist in different formats in the minds of everybody you come in contact with. Right. So there's a version of you today. I will see you and I've met you today. And I think of you this way. There, there will be somebody else that you work with that think of you different. Then there'll be a your husband or a spouse that sees you in a different way. So there are hundreds of versions of us. How many people do we meet? Those these, they, those many versions mm -hmm. and how many more. There's an infinite number of versions. So we're constantly changing and morphing, et cetera. Um, I'm sorry. There's so much information in my head that I often there really is. Myself. There really <laughs> is. And, and but what I loved, what I love about this, um, what I love about the universe exists in here is that now we have the power to. We can take back our power since we're the creative. We're the, we're creating our lives. We're creating our universe. We can take back that power. Um, yes. But you also write that it's important that you take it back without blame, judgment, um, shame. And, and the darker, um, the darker energies to 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 clear this out so that you can recreate new neural pathways. Correct. Yeah, it's more than that, though. It's saying, hold on a moment. If I'm all powerful and we all are, then I can't blame the government. I can't blame my neighbor. I can't blame my spouse because I've created that. For as long as I carry on that blame game, I'm putting my power outside of me. I'm believing that my happiness is due to outside factors. Meanwhile, I'm the only person responsible for, for my happiness. And to, to loop in what you were saying earlier about, well, all possibilities exist. They do. All we are is emitting and transceiving in, uh, equipment. Electromagnetic impulses. And what we're doing is we are tuning into the frequency that exists. Why do they all exist? Look at a, we already said, look, if you look at quantum physics, the electron is in every position. It's superimposed. It is in every position. What makes it a sumer position? Our observation of it. And life is exactly the same. So all of those um, opportunities, all of those uh, possibilities exist out there. It's what level is your frequency? What are you tuning into and creating? And the universe is giving you that information back the way, the same way that you are it tuning out. It reflects it back at you by everybody you meet and everything you experience is your reflection. So it tells you something about yourself. Mm -hmm. So to get your own power, to take your power back, you cannot take it back if you're blaming somebody else. If you're in a position like this, that's where your power is, the person you're pointing a finger at. Mm -hmm. They now need to change in order for you to feel better. There's no, you are at their mercy and there's no worse feeling in the world. And mm -hmm. we all go in, I call it victim mode mm -hmm. and we all go into victim mode. In fact, it's our natural place to be because when we get hurt so badly, you have no idea how to process that hurt. What do you do with that hurt? So we don't even understand the hurt and 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 we try. And so we bury it. That was my, I buried we everything. Bury it or blame. Yeah, or blame. So one of the other ways is to blame. You, you, it's, I, I read a book, um, Don Miguel Reyes. 
Uh, oh, uh -huh. yeah, the mastery of love. And he says it's the equivalent to everybody vomits their feelings and their that's stuff right. that, that hurts them. They'll vomit it over somebody else to feel better. And that's blame. That's blame. You're vomiting your pain over somebody else and mm -hmm. giving them your pain so that you can feel better. But you don't. <laughs> but you yes. don't wake up to that fact. You don't go, okay, I don't feel better. So now what? <laughs> yeah. You start becoming aware of your actions. And as soon as you can go, okay, I'm in control of this. How do I take control? Right. It, for me, it was the understanding that I am everything and everything comes from within me. So I have absolute control over what I do. I have mm -hmm. to go. Forgive me. I'll be back if I can. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Um, <laughs> I know so, it's a book. <laughs> <laughs> so Tracy, um, I, I also, um, I loved that you included this in the book, the power of words and thought. Um, we've talked a little bit about thought, but even as you say, words carry a vibration in itself and colors and shapes. That's Absolutely. really very interesting to me. Um, go I'm, ahead. I'm busy developing a course called I am divinely guided because uh, our words are incredibly powerful because we become what we say we are. So anything you follow after the words, I am, I am beautiful, I am ugly, I am smart, I'm stupid, I am rich, I am poor, mm -hmm. becomes your state, your, your reality, places, your reality. So um, what we say we are, we become. So um, we think that uh, it's all connected, your thoughts, your, 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 your thoughts, your words, your feelings and your actions. You'll think a thing, you'll think something. We don't think that that happens first, but it's the thought that happens first, but it happens so fast. And the emotion is there so quickly that we pick up on the emotion before we actually think, what was I thinking, et cetera, et cetera. When I suddenly feel something, I've gotten so tuned into how I feel that as soon as I feel like something's off, <laughs> I stop and I go, okay, what gives? And then I'll check in and there's either guilt or there's a feeling of I've done something wrong. There's the wrongness. And I think, okay, what went wrong? Um, and I'll look for it. I, I, I feel it. And then I'll look and I'll go back into what, what did I just think before this happened? And I'll go, Oh, I, it was some old programming and it just came in and, and, and my, I'm just so in tune to how I feel it and I'll stop and I'll address it. And then I'll logically think, does that make any more sense? No. Okay. And we, and, and I check it out, but, um, I apologize again. No, oh, I, I love it. I love it. Tracy. So, <laughs> so, but that, that, um, you know, that's that you, you talk about, um, you talk about the work of Esther and Jerry Hicks and the vortex and the importance of being able to stop yourself, the importance to be able to stop the negative, um, spiral. Yes. Uh, so that that's important. The first thing. I put into place. It was the first thing. I did a whole bunch of Tony Robbins courses and all sorts oh, of stuff. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. I've, yeah, um, I've, yeah. I saw that. Power, and, yeah. And um, he, he got me thinking along those lines and I thought to myself, okay, how can I start to be in control? And uh, it was COVID and my daughters had moved back in um, and they each brought two animals with them. So we had three or three or four, we had three cats and two little dogs. Uh, so we had five animals and they brought two animals each, two cats and two dogs. And we had a house full of um, adults and animals. It was crazy. It was like a zoo. Um, and I was so grateful because, I mean, who gets the opportunity to have their adult daughters back home mm. and get to know them as adults? It was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was also quite stressful <laughs> with everything going on and we're there 24-7 with each other, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I've always been a, a house proud person and um, a little bit uh, OCD, um, Stephen won't say a little bit <laughs> and dishes in the sink would drive me insane and I would come in here and I'd just clean the sink and I'd come back in and there'd be dishes in the sink and it pressed it triggered me and one day I thought okay come on let's logically look at this is it a problem the dishes in the sink well no <laughs> yeah so what gives what is your problem yes and I asked myself intelligent questions again Tony Robbins everything comes down to the questions you ask yourself when you go why me the yeah stupid you're gonna get is why not you what are you gonna do with that answer nothing <laughs> yeah that's I interesting intelligent questions so and I asked, okay yes go ahead no I was just gonna say in the book uh, you talk about Dr. Emoto's experiment the yes. the power of the thought the power of the words and they he did in it can you talk about that experiment you actually put a picture in yes. the book which i thought was so 
incredible. I've never seen that photo before. Oh, it's amazing. So um, he took um, water and he, he froze it and he would get crystals, but he would put the water on words and it didn't matter which language he used, whether he used English, uh, uh, Japanese, um, any other language, um, and he froze it. And the crystals that formed on words like beautiful and love and gratitude and that kind of thing were beautiful. They were crystal clear and they formed beautifully, etc. The crystals that formed on hate and um, 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 horrible words, anger, and things like that they didn't form so quite well they formed misshapen and they were uh, cloudy and they didn't create beautiful crystals and that's just the power of your words if you come to our house on our water um, filter we've got uh, love and gratitude written on it and the most powerful love was a beautiful crystal and gratitude was a beautiful crystal the most amazing crystal was love and gratitude together and we owned a restaurant when I owned the restaurant I got printed on the plates love and gratitude and I cannot tell you how wonderful it is to eat off those plates I still got some of them at home that is wonderful uh, yeah that's but a that's great how idea words are they carry everything is energy including your words including colors and you see a color you see that color because it's vibrating at a specific uh, frequency that's why it is that color to you and interesting nothing is the color that it is yeah it's, you it's yeah it reflects that color to you it's a it, reflection yes yeah and 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 you see that color based on your frequency as well so blue won't even be the same to all of us <laughs> yeah that's really that's really interesting um also in the book tracy uh you quote carl carl um is it young or un um oh i never know how to pronounce it carl young yeah um, Yun. no idea <laughs> yeah and he's and he states he states until you make the unconscious conscious, I've got my notes right here. Until yeah. you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you'll call it fate. So yeah. un until, until you recognize um, some of your conscious beliefs, um, you, you're, you, you don't really get the, the changes that you wanted to, that you would like to see. And gratitude um, as you say in your book, is the number one, the most important, powerful method of manifesting um, intentions. Yes. And, and don't be attached to outcomes. That's interesting. That's what we are currently learning. So when you put it out there, they, uh, you must speak the language of the universe, which is frequency, and you must feel like you already have what you have, and then not be attached to receiving it. Uh, I mean, if, if you yeah. Any more complicated. <laughs> yeah. And finally, now I have full understanding of that. And the only way to have understanding of anything is to experience it. Mm -hmm. So we have been through three years of man. I feel like Job. <laughs> I know. I know. It was so kind of you to share in the book your personal experiences, <laughs> which, um, you know, I mean, the book is for you, Tracy. It's everything. It's real. It's very real. This everything that you're talking about yeah it's it's it, it i turned around from um morosely depressed to feeling like the sun was shining and it's always going to shine forever literally bouncing around like a, a you know an idiot <laughs> in two days and i thought huh was I not really depressed? Was I pretending? Because yeah. how do you go through over two days? And I thought, I can't figure this out. And I just inherent, just followed uh, my heart. Uh -huh. <laughs> just, I'd, I'd gotten to a point where life sucked so badly that I had given up everything. I did not care. And so that was what I needed to be to just blindly follow. And what did yeah. I follow? I just felt I followed instinct because I had nothing else to go on. So I right. just followed in inner guidance. <laughs> well, that that brings me to the point that um, in the book, you say that we focus much more on our negative outcomes when we have many more positive outcomes than negative, but yet we always rush to those two little negative uh, outcomes that that are nagging us. And we put so much attention there, which is moving away from gratitude on the great things that are happening in your life. That was a great example. Yeah, it's because we have the animal brain. So it's the it's the amygdala, it's called the amygdala. And um, it's been um, associated with the ego, which we call it, we call it the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's, let's put it out there and say, 
you need your ego. It keeps you alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not bad because there is nothing bad or good, but right. for the thinking that makes it so. So your ego is not bad, but just understand what your ego does for you and what the, the amygdala, the animal brain does. Anything, we are computers <laughs> and we collect data through our senses, through our eyes, touchy, taste, smell, whatever, hearing. And when it comes in, the brain then looks for patterns and it will then compute a pattern out to you and you'll go, huh, that makes sense. Or you go, oh no, what does that mean? And then you've got to think a little bit about it and make some sense out of it. But it'll go through the amygdala first to look for whatever can cause you harm. Now we seek and ye shall find what we look to find we will find. So mm-hmm. if there's a hurricane warning, I see it on the news, and then I pick up my, my phone to go into my weather app to now look at how I can prepare for that hurricane and be prepared and, and survive it. What am I looking for? I'm looking for that hurricane coming to t- wipe me out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why aren't you looking for the sunny skies? Yeah, that's none interesting. Yes, none of us look for the sunny skies because it hasn't happened yet. It's the future. Right. And all possibilities of the future exist. And where do you create the future? Right in this present moment. And what future are you creating when you open up an app to look at the hurricane coming and how close it is to you and what you have to do to prepare prepare for it coming? Why don't we look to prepare for the sunny skies? (laughs) Right, right. We don't. don't. That's that's an interesting point, Tracy, because um, when we've been through a lot of fires here on the West coast. And sometimes when you look at the ravages and the the devastation, every once in a while, you'll see one house standing that wasn't touched. And you, and you look at the devastation around it and you're thinking, how is that possible that this house isn't charred? Anything and it's is possible. Mm-hmm. Anything is possible. For me to have cancer today and be completely gone tomorrow is mm-hmm. absolutely possible. And how probable is it? It's probable based on how much you believe that it's possible. Right. And, and that's how probable it can, can become. But anything is possible. And so long as you start thinking that, I've started thinking, okay, anything's possible. So could I meet an alien tomorrow? I've started thinking about things that I used to think, oh, that's stupid. I've started thinking, is that possible? Oh, yes, that's possible. Then I think to myself, is that what I want? No. Okay. And then we move on. <laughs> I just look at what is possible. And life has taken on a completely new meaning when I look at what's possible. Yeah. And when, And when I've now gotten into my full power, oh man, I look at that every single day now, I look and I think, oh, you did that yesterday. Could you do this today? And I think, oh, wow. You know, Tracy, we have evidence of that every day, don't we? Every day. Like when you think about somebody, uh, you're thinking about, gee, I haven't heard from Julie in so long. And then two days later, she calls me or um, I run into her at the grocery store. So we do have evidence of, of our ability to, to manifest. But we, we don't take cognizance of it. We don't. It's like when you see a a meme, like all these people that we've quoted, oh, that's lovely. And then we move on. Right. What's the missing step to seeing something that makes a lot of sense and then to it actually having an effect on our lives? Mm -hmm. And that's what I took with the law of creation. I thought, okay, it's going to affect my life or affect my life, whichever is the right word. Um, It's going to have an effect on my life and the way I live my life. Mm -hmm. How do that? How do I do that? So there was the intelligent question. How do I implement this into my life? And then the stepping stones appear. Ask the question and suddenly there's an answer. Yes, yeah. Somebody gives you a book or the meme comes along or or Siri gives you an advert that, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so true. That's you so true. You open to uh, recognizing when you have a sign that comes to you. They're there. They're there all day long. <laughs> yes. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to ask you something. Uh, I'm just going to go over my notes here. It was really interesting. Um Okay, let's see. Oh, this was really interesting about. um, So in the book, you go into the 18 laws of creation, which was, I never knew there were 18 laws of creation. Each, (laughs) Probably more. Um, But uh, we won't go into them here. But but in the law of balance, you state, in order to receive something, um, you must release something. And I wanted to ask you, is that is that release? That's like putting it out there in, le- in the universe, letting it go. It, would that be allowing or what? It's more like letting go. So you must let go of what you want in order to get it. And that rang true to me so much. But 
I would understand it. And then the next moment I, I couldn't make sense of it. Mm -hmm. It was so elusive, the understanding of it, that it's now I have the full understanding of it. But every single thing I ever needed to do, because I'm such a feel person, I, I can't often put it into words mm -hmm. until I processed the heck out of it. Yeah. Um, now, three years later, I can finally put stuff into words. My first interview, I didn't have so much to say but, uh, <laughs> because I felt a lot, but I didn't understand it mentally to be able to talk about it. Um, and you have to let go of what it is that you want. So if I want freedom, I have to let go. And freedom is my top priority. If I want freedom, I must let go of what I want in order to be free of it. Um, and then you're attracted to you because you can't have an attachment or hold on to something wanting it because just that attachment proves that you don't have it. Uh huh. And you need to be sending out the signal that you have everything your heart desires so that you bring back the same things on that signal. Yeah. <laughs> the universe answers you and it will always hear you and it will always answer you. And it doesn't say to you, hey, Tracy, are you sure you want some more experiences that are going to make you angry or sad or, or whatever? It doesn't say, are you sure? Last chance. It just hears you and it delivers. Yeah. What you signal that it brings you whatever is matching your signal um and that's just you got to start understanding that and to get a better signal you have to be gra grateful you, you can't know what you've got to be grateful for because that's a mental process it's like having a shopping list but until you've gone out and bought the and paid for your stuff and brought them home and put them into the pantry you don't actually have them gratitude is the same way you must buy and pay for your gratitude and unpack it and put it into your heart uh-huh gratitude you have to be it you have to be vibrating at the level of gratitude it's everything yeah it's everything I thought it was um I thought it was it really hit home to me when you said that um wishing for something is actually just what you said it's sort of a negative process yeah. because it's, it's you don't have it it's right a focus on lack <laughs> yeah it's a focus on lack. on lack you, uh, we are you get what you focus on because seek and you shall find so what you're focusing on mm -hmm. is lack yeah. And we, we're so caught up in it that we say things, that, for me, the statement, oh, I'm sorry you're going through that. Don't be sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm very happy that you're going through that because the universe is preparing you for whatever you want. Everything happens for a reason. Right. Can you be sorry anybody's going through anything when it's all happening for a reason and there's a divine plan to it. Yeah. So I try very hard. There will be instances where I will say sorry because I know that that person is expecting to hear it. Like if I was late for our appointment, I am sorry that I'm late for our appointment because that will make you feel better. But everything happens for a reason. And I'm not about to put out the vibration of I'm sorry. So yeah. I, I, I'll try and say, thank you for waiting for me. Mm -hmm. instead of saying i'm sorry i'm late so i just try and tweak it so that i'm looking in the right direction uh -huh. uh, not at uh, the right vibration yeah towards the light yes so so the tools to so one way to to get into to your own personal knowing um as you state in the book is to uh get into meditation and you and steve have this really fun exercise at the very end of the book which i absolutely loved and it was um going into a self uh hypnotic state or deep meditation and inviting in a guest that's wonderful steven does that regularly and he regularly has nikola tesla jesus and a couple of other people einstein i think he's chatted to at the end of the day if everything is energy we're all energy we're all the same it's just different vibrational frequencies mm -hmm. and you can just tap into that frequency and talk to that person by talking to them. It's not language. It's feeling again. So it's an intuitive process and you are tapping into their frequency and therefore their knowledge and everything that goes with who they were and what they um, um, uh, did when they were here. Mm -hmm. So he does that regularly. I will just go and connect with my higher self which is the same thing mm -hmm. um, because we are all one um, and um, uh, we're, we're all the same. <laughs> so right. the, what you're doing is you're just accessing, they call it the Akashic records. Um, and all that means is it's um, up in the sky. You can't see it. Um, it's a, it's a frequency it's you get there and you can understand all sorts of things. And that's where Stephen and I are now. It's like, we don't learn lessons daily. We learn lessons hourly. I'm, I'm constant, I learn lessons from everything. It'll be, there's signs everywhere. And you just connect and suddenly things are coming in your mind. It feels like it sparks. Yeah. It just goes, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's true. It's true. And the oneness, um, you know, that's a, for some people, that's really hard to grasp be, because we have our individual bodies. Um, h- how, where are we connected on the oneness and, and the oneness you're saying we're connected in the divine order of oneness. So how I first put it into words to make it understandable for myself, and it was very basic and very simple. We are all energy. So we're all just vibrating energy. So how are we any different? Right. Not. We're all just energy. And for me, that, and we can't be created and we can't be destroyed. So we're just all energy. So anything that exists is energy. So all that's happening is I'm seeing it as a tree, as grass and whatever, because of the observation effect. I've now um, put that um, photon or whatever it is into an observed position. And I now create a picture for my eyes to see. That's that really, <laughs> that's, that is, that's that perception, that part in the book where uh, a, a photon or a particle being observed could, when it was observed, it could change its form. Well, when it's observed, it's it chooses a position because it's or it chooses. Open. Yeah, it's yeah. in all different positions, and based on your frequency, what you're talking about. I mean, what you're feeling about, what you're talking about on a frequency level to the universe, you will then choose the position of that photon. And suddenly your reality develops. That's the observer effect. And so everything comes from you and it comes from you based on how you respond to whatever you experience. So we experience stuff through our senses and whatever you, however you respond to that is based on what you will actually experience, what you will perceive, what you will see. Um, So you've got to get into where you're vibrating because you, we affect. If I, if I don't even say a word and I come and stand next to you, you'll pick up on me. Mm -hmm. You will pick up on my presence and you you don't, I don't have to say a word and you'll walk away and you'll think that seemed like a strange person or she seemed quite nice. I wish I'd said hello or she seemed this way or what. Whatever. you're picking up on things you cannot see and right you're picking those all day long because everything is energy and you you picking up on it and you giving it out to yourself right and just because we can't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist exactly. you know because you can't see the air you can't see gratitude you can't see the physical um properties and of even spirituality or divine oneness and so if you can't see it it doesn't exist and that's that's And Steve said earlier that nothing you can actually see with your eyes does exist. And everything you cannot see with your eyes actually exists. exists. Yeah, that's really (laughs) something. That's a bit of a mind bender. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) The the book is so, so great because it goes into detail. Um, You also talk about um, measuring emotions. And I thought this was really interesting that pride is owned by the ego. We talked about the ego. It's a very, it's a necessary um aspect uh, but it's just our personality we are not our egos it's not who we are Absolutely. and and um i think that the chemicals that you talked about the chemicals that are released through emotions are just uh, as powerful um and some of that uh, nikola tesla um examples that you give in the book like lavender for example um, the the girls that are selling lavender have a much calmer um, uh, state of being. Just, I mean, there's things that we can do to help ourselves. And they didn't get sick. So and they didn't get sick. The plague, the, and the girls that were handing out lavender to people as a as a medicinal herb, they didn't catch the plague because of the properties of lavender. Yeah. Um, so everything has, and that's why aromatherapy essential oils work. Um, each one has different properties. Um, and if you're feeling, if you're wearing green, you'll be connected to the uh, the heart. Energy. Heart chakra. Yeah. Green. And and so even the colors that you wear can uh, dictate your mood because it's all stuff we can't see. It's all frequency. It's all the language of the universe, and you pick up on it. Mm-hmm. You you are, you are in tune with it. You're just not consciously in tune with it. Right. And in order to become consciously in tune with it, you've got to rise above your um, animal brain, your ego, for a higher level of consciousness to understand more than your ego can understand. Mm-hmm. Because the ego doesn't really understand anything but survival. Correct. It doesn't and- even understand love. It understands, right. it understands love as in love hurts. Love or love for itself only. Yes, love for itself. So survival, love for yourself and love hurts. So only the ego can get hurt. So if you're hurt, you're in your ego. Right. Um, 
if, you, if you're not in your ego, you're not going to be hurt. Because why would you hurt yourself? You hurt yourself. Everything comes from within. So yeah. all, pain, all pain, all anger, all everything that we can do this to somebody else or anything else, you're doing it to yourself. And that's victim mode. And mm -hmm. the only way to get out of victim mode is to stop hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. But we won't do that because we need... we. We need to blame somebody to feel better. <laughs> it, that's exactly right. But they, you say the same thing about um, forgiveness, you know, as far as even um, cosmic intelligence, you know, if you're really forgiving somebody who you're really releasing yourself from your own prison, it's got nothing to do with the person. So um, I, I was sexually abused by my father. And I, ha I had never spoke a word to him. I didn't see him or anything for um, most of 30 years. And for 20 years, I never even saw him or spoke one word with him. And um, um, at, in 2020, when I was becoming this new person, I would check in because I wanted proof as well. I'm a human being. Okay, prove to me that I'm on the right path and it's all happening. And, and so I would ask um, um, intelligent questions and I'd say, okay, what is this new version of myself? Because there's like 25 million. Stephen says I got 17 different personalities and one <laughs> likes him. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I would ask questions and I'd get an answer. So there was a like a whole conversation going on. And I said, what does this new version that I'm becoming look like in the future? And one of the voices said, she has a relationship with her father. And I thought, oh, well, there you go. I've used up all the wisdom with these voices. I need new ones. And I said, no, uh -uh, no, no, no. Um, and then uh, uh, time, some time later, I asked again. So what does this person look like? You have a, you'll have a relationship with your father. Oh, freaking hell, no. Yeah. <laughs> eventually I said okay <laughs> and I went and I, uh, I looked up for him and I found him and then we started co uh, conversing and my first thought was oh he hasn't changed this man's still the same blah 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 and eventually today cut a long story short I have such a wonderful relationship with him it's online by email we haven't seen each other which I don't think we will because how how can you it's it's really difficult for him um because I've achieved something that most people look at me and they go Huh? <laughs> we can yeah. understand forgiveness, but do you still need to have him in your life? That we can't understand. Yeah. Um, and so I've done a lot of thinking and questioning. What is it? What is it that I actually did? And if everything comes from us, so does the sexual abuse I experienced. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very hard to get your head around, mm -hmm. but, but the reason it's hard to get your head around is because you're using your eyes to understand yeah. when you close these and use this, to understand, it becomes a different ball game and a completely different story to tell yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I could understand that um, how I responded to that is how I perceive everything that went down. And I started to just address that and work with it, et cetera. And that was my second book. My second book was dedicated to my dad. Um, at, 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 uh, we're learning to fly. And it was because he he helped teach me forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And if yes. I yeah, it wasn't forgiveness as in, oh, I forgive you for doing something wrong to me. It was forgiveness that made me feel like there was nothing to forgive in the first place. And that liberated me. Yeah. It made me so free that I stopped even wondering whether it was the right thing or, or, or how I did it or anything like that. I was just so grateful to have that gone. Right. I, no longer when I thought of it, I no longer felt uh, it turns out that I used to carry around guilt. I used to carry around shame. Mm -hmm. I used to carry around wrongness. Mm -hmm. And that's a, another story. And yeah. I used to carry around um, a whole bunch of things all on that low vibration. Now, shame is the lowest vibrational um, uh, frequency. Uh, you, you're just so, it's just so awful to be there. And that's what I'd carried around. That was the baggage I was carrying right. around. That was and your prison. I, yes, only I can let it go and only I can put it down. So when you forgive somebody, you let go of that baggage you've been carrying mm -hmm. around and it's the best gift you give yourself. It, it really what? is. Do it again. <laughs> yeah. You know, the forgiveness is really interesting because it is the gift of freedom. Um, mm -hmm. But it's that's probably the hardest forgiveness, I think, is probably the hardest one, especially one from, from um, a sexual abuse. And the reason... Um, I think that the the way that I understand forgiveness finally, because I've been like you, I've been asking how, I mean, what, how can you forgive really fully, completely? And, and if you, if you understand that you're not your ego, you know, that, that, that actions taken, um, that aren't of love and light or from the ego and we're not our egos. That that's a big, that was a biggie. Yeah. That was I'll a great big one. The, day, the understanding that we are one 
is what helped me forgive. So where I understood we were one and I thought, okay, and we are one with our higher source, our higher power with God, whatever you think it is, we are one with him because, or who it, <laughs> it, mm-hmm. uh, is, it is also just energy and we're just energy. So where's the difference? And so it's a whole bunch of information that you got to put together for yourself and it'll look different in your head than it will in mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll our own understanding based on the the, the, the the color glasses we've got on and your color glasses are the experiences you've had in your life. So everybody's journey is different um, and unique to themselves. And so you got to make sense of that oneness. And the yeah. moment I could recognize that my father was my reflection and what was he telling about me, about myself? I was carrying around guilt. I was carrying around shame, et cetera. And the moment I could understand that and let that go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. You did say by monitoring our thoughts, we can make, uh, we can create positively instead of destructively. That's, that's fantastic. Tracy, this book is so amazing. I know the amount of work that you guys put into it and the years and um, I just love it. I just thank you so much for being here today. There's thank so much you. more. <laughs> we could yes, go on. So much more. I can talk for I know. I love it. <laughs> I love it. But, you know, um, we are not human beings on a spiritual journey. We are spiritual beings on a human journey. And you have to understand that because that's a, a little secret into who you actually are. You're mm-hmm. not you came here and you took human form. We didn't come, we've lost our concept of who we actually are because mm-hmm. we didn't come here to pretend to be humans because you're not really going to have a human experience if you're pretending. We came here and we are human, but you have to remember who you really are. Yeah. Who are you really? <laughs> who are you really? Being know thyself. That. Yes. To know, know thyself. You cannot get anywhere if you do not know thyself. And that's why I'm now doing the course on I am. Know thyself because that's you got it that's 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 the journey that's why we're here that's why we're here yes this is this is fantastic you can um thank you so much tracy you can reach uh steve and tracy at steve and tracy webster.com where you can download the book you can look at all the other programs that you offer you offer i mean there's a plethora of fabulous things on that website uh Mm -hmm. the book is called law of creation it's available on amazon barnes and noble uh, dot com and uh thank you so much i so appreciate it (laughs) we're i'm gonna we're gonna circle back (laughs) Okie dokie. <laughs> you, you can reach us at you uh, info at you, you equals me.org. Our website is you equals me.org and visit our Etsy store for merch or logo wear for the you equals me uh, foundation. That's you equals me Etsy store, all one word in your Google search. And also check out our podcast with Sergei Kovalenkov and donate to help him uh, build refugee shelters for his fellow Ukrainians who've lost everything but hope. Uh, We have that also on our U equals me website. And if you could help uh, us raise money for this humanitarian um, and please, please, if you like this um, podcast, this YouTube, please like it, subscribe, share. This is really great information. Tracy, I can't wait to see you again. Me too. Thank you very much. Then it was wonderful. (laughs)